Hello everyone, Ben here, and welcome to a Senate election prediction for the Senate race in Nevada um, between Dean Heller and a yet to be determined Democrat, um, though Jackie Rosen is considered the likely nominee. So I'm actually going to consider this as a race between Heller and Jackie Rosen. And so far, you can only find one poll with about 650 um, participants. I couldn't determine whether or not they were likely voters or just adults or registered voters or anything like that. So I'm just going to treat it as somewhere in between those. Um, and it showed Jackie Rosen with a narrow one-point lead, 47-46, over Dean Heller. Um, and looking at Nevada's electoral history, it's just a pure swing state when it comes to the Senate race. You know, for a while it had Harry Reid and uh, one Republican, uh, it didn't matter who, um, with a few weird periods where Nevada had two uh, Democrats, uh, Harry Reid and some other Democrat, but that was only until the end of his term and then he got voted out. Um, <laughs> And they're not as incumbent friendly, unless your name is Harry Reid, as most other states. So Heller is a little bit more vulnerable for that reason. And again, the political climate is, you know, favoring them. And when I say them, I mean the Democrats in this case. Um, so the political environment favors the Democrats. Um, and Nevada is a state that is becoming more blue, at least at the presidential level, and I expect that to continue on into the, um, I expect that to continue down and trickle down to Senate and gubernatorial level, um, simply because Las Vegas is growing, Reno is growing, um, so that's, of course, uh, Clark County and uh, Washoe County. Um, and I just, I don't know. I don't really see a way for this race to, I, I don't, I can see Heller somehow holding on, but I'm, I'm, I'm not, I, I really don't expect that. Um, and again, especially with the political climate favoring the Democrats anyway because of an incumbent Republican president. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to take his approval ratings. Um, and that's, of course, Donald Trump. I'm not exactly sure how to take Trump's approval ratings because it just seemed really weird. You know, there's a split between his economic approval rating and his actual approval rating. Most people generally rate... Uh, at least the most recent poll I can find on it, and I'll see if I can uh, find it so I can show you guys, because I haven't been able to find it in a few months. Uh, it showed Donald Trump uh, above 50% in terms of economic approval rating. Um, it was from a very reputable pollster and not, you know, uh, a Republican biased pollster. And that same poll showed his approval rating at about 30 36 percent which is really weird considering most presidents do about 12 points better than their economic approval ratings um, so I've got a few theories for that and the first one is that is one that I don't fully believe but it's a theory that I want to that I'm gonna see if I can find a way to test it out is that his economic approval rating is more in line with what people actually believe I don't believe that uh, uh, that theory. I don't think there's a way to prove that, and I just think that seems a little bit weird that people would vote one way uh, when it comes to the economy, but when they ask overall, they'd vote the other way. Uh, reverse to what history has shown to be the case of what they do. It just doesn't make much sense, and I just don't think that theory holds water. The second one, is that uh, 
The second one is that Republicans and Democrats are rating his approve or uh, measuring how much they approve based off of different factors. And this one I think has the biggest, the the largest uh, burden of or basis of proof because it makes perfect sense, at least in my opinion. Um, because Democrats would rate it based off of um, how they feel about President Trump, uh, his personality, whether or not he seems professional to them, stuff like that. You know, and Republicans are just like, oh, my paycheck just got bigger. Okay, I approve. Uh, so it could be grading on different scales here. And I think that makes the most sense. And then the in-between is that uh, maybe the political environment is changing, and that's hard to measure to begin with. But I don't think that's going to come into play in Nevada. I think it's just going to be based off of we've got an incumbent Republican in, in a state that's growing ever more Democrat and a... Uh, political environment that favors the Democrats because of, again, a Republican incumbent in the White House. Um, that said, the economic environment is still pretty good despite uh, Trump's uh, raising fears of a trade war. It seems the market is rather... The markets have stabilized and they just don't care anymore or something because they shot up really much, at least if the first part of the trading day uh, is anything to go by. <laughs> but I wouldn't trust the stock market if you're using the stock market to create the economy. Um, you need to look at things like the inflation rate, consumer confidence, unemployment, stuff like that, which are all at where most nations want their where most nations set their targets. We're already there, so things should be good. Um, provided nothing too drastic happens to upset that. And I'm not sure how a trade war could do uh, upset that uh, in either direction, not positive or negative. Um, I think there's good and bad to starting a trade war, and I definitely can't see how a trade war would benefit the United States. Um, I just don't have enough information to make a judgment just yet. Um, but anyway, guys, I am going to flip over to my Senate map. As soon as I get some polls uh, for these states, I will uh, let you know. And by the way, in North Dakota, there is a poll out with uh, Heidi Heitkamp and Kevin Kramer um, within, three, within three points and within the margin of error. Um, Heitkamp was in front. But I'll come back to that as soon as uh, we start getting primaries and more polls coming up. Because, uh, yeah, I do not know. I want to see more than one poll, essentially. So, in Nevada, I'm going to rate this one as Lean's Democrat. Even though, uh, in what I would consider a true toss-up. I would almost always uh, lean in a state in favor of the incumbent and rate states that I rate as true toss-up. The reason why I'm leaning at Democrat is uh, Nevada's trends show it becoming uh, a blue state, and this is the year it should, uh, I think most people would say, well, it's a blue state now. Uh, I think this is the year that it just, all the trends show up. So I'm breaking my, I always lean in favor of the incumbent in this case, but Nevada is a special case. Uh, next, next time, uh, so next Monday, I'm going to be doing Florida, and then we're going to move to the special election, and then we're going to start evaluating these as a whole and start making actual predict, uh, and start basing these off of polls, which should start coming in in the next week and a half-ish to three weeks which is, again, next Monday. The Monday after that will be the special election. And then we can start evaluating these based off of polls. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a nice day, and I will see you guys next time. Uh, <clears throat> take it easy.